everybody welcome back to the medical projects youtube channel if you are new around here my name is olivia i'm a second year medical student at king's college london and here at medical projects we've made this youtube channel dedicated to creating content to give you the best tips and bits of advice for getting your dream place at medical school so if you are applying to medical school or just want an insight into what medical school is really like make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you can be notified when we post. Also, if you're looking for a video where you see what a day in the life of a medical student really is like, please make sure to check out our latest upload. It was so much fun to film and it just gives you an insight into what medical school is actually like. So for today's video, I'm going to be talking about a topic that is perhaps not the most pleasant one, but it is going to be the five most common reasons that applicants are rejected from medical school. Now talking about rejection is a bit of a tricky topic because obviously we want to hope that we're going to get a place at medical school and that you're going to be successful and it's definitely important to back yourself but when it comes to the statistics 65 percent of people get zero offers for medical school everyone knows it's a very competitive oversubscribed course but by identifying common pitfalls, it can hopefully minimize your chances of getting rejected. Lots of things about the medical school application process are just about a case of learning what not to do and what looks good and what doesn't look good. And there are so many modifiable things that you can do to increase your chances of getting in. Even just basic things like your communication skills when it comes to interview can make all the difference with you getting an offer or you getting rejected. So without further ado, I'm going to go through my top five most common reasons that medical school applicants are rejected. The first one is failing to meet the entry requirements. Now, this sounds like a kind of obvious one, but when you're applying to medical school, it's really important to make sure you're applying to those which have a variety of entry requirements. So what I mean by this is many medical schools will stipulate you need an A star, AA or A star A star A. Many medical schools will say you simply need three A's so it's always a good idea to have maybe for your insurance choice a school with a slightly lower entry requirement. Additionally if you haven't got the highest UCAT score it probably isn't worth applying to unis which use that really heavily and if you want more advice on why you should be applying with a lower or medium UCAT score definitely check out our other two videos we've posted on this. Obviously, I appreciate many of you will have already applied, but if you're thinking of applying next year or looking into medicine, that's definitely something to consider. The next reason I think that people are rejected from medical school is because they are being overly descriptive in their personal statement. Again, we've made a video all about how to write a strong personal statement. So if that's something you're looking into for next year, definitely check that out. What I mean by this is many of us have the tendency to write at length about incredible surgeries we've seen or amazing shadowing opportunities we've had. But the most important thing to do in your personal statement is to reflect on the experiences you've had and talk about the qualities you've identified that are conducive to being a good, safe doctor. Do not go into detail about what you've seen. And that goes for interviews as well. They might say to you, what are some qualities of being a good doctor that you noted on your work experience? And don't go into a bunch of descriptive detail about the circumstances about your work experience. Just answer the question and answer it succinctly and show how you've demonstrated those qualities. The next common pitfall is not preparing well enough for interviews. I know that medical school interviews are a really annoying one because they come at a time of year when you're probably gonna be busy with A-level mocks or you know various other commitments and then you have to squeeze this in as well. And I know when you get an interview, you can be so excited and think, you know, by that stage, you've eliminated a lot of the competition. I've got this, let's go and wing it. But actually there are some some things that you really do need to prepare for. So things I recommend preparing for are looking up the basics of medical ethics, reading things like the NHS values and the NHS constitution, the things that are expected of you at a professional level. Additionally, you should be looking at some current medical topics. So it might be something like COVID-19 and how it's impacted healthcare. It might be privatization of the NHS. You might be asked something along the lines of how do you think we're going to cope with an increasingly elderly population? Basically, just make sure you're clued in on really hot topics that are going on in the NHS because the chances are you're going to be asked about one of those. Similarly, you're probably going to be asked a medical ethics question. So you might be asked about, you know, you have one organ and three people that are looking to receive it. Which one should receive it based on your principles and understanding of medical ethics? Questions like that are ones that you can easily prepare for if you just set the time aside and dedicate some time to studying those sort of topics. 
Other ones where they're going to ask you off the cuff, you know, why you want to be a doctor or why not nursing, you can prepare to a degree, but obviously you don't want to sound too robotic. So it's just finding that balance between making sure you have some ideas in your head that you're going to speak about, um, but also not making it sound too rehearsed. The fourth reason I think that people are rejected from medical school is because they fail with basic communication. When you're in an interview, it is incredible how nervous you can get even if you go into it feeling pretty confident more often than not when you are sitting across from the interviewer and you have all this pressure on you and you know how important this day is it's really easy to just dry up you know your throat gets all dry and tight and you get really nervous and shuffly make sure you're maintaining that open body language that confidence honestly fake it till you make it like everyone is so nervous when they're at interview but simple things like don't play with your sleeves don't play with your hair try not to like you know look around try and maintain eye contact try be confident even if you don't know the answer that is okay just say you know i'm unfamiliar with this topic but this is what i think this is my thought process think out loud and just be confident. You know, you might look amazing on paper, but at the end of the day, the profession is all about being able to talk to people and communicate. So if you are failing at that level, they're not going to let you in because that is the most important quality. Finally, the last reason that I think people are often rejected from medical school is because they show a lack of insight into what the career entails. What I mean by this is often we kind of romanticize the career, myself included, you think this is gonna be amazing, I'm gonna be saving lives and it's gonna be such an awesome career. And you know that it is, but I think often in the interview, they want to see that you've really carefully considered this career. It's going to be one that is emotionally demanding. It's going to be one where your social and work-life balance is probably going to be a lot more difficult than some other jobs. It's going to be one where you're pushed to your limits. It's a lifelong learning experience and it's just quite hard work. And I think it's important to acknowledge that there are downsides to being a doctor and it's not the dreamy profession that a lot of the TV shows make it out to be. Be honest when you're in your interviews, it's okay if you say, you know, I found this aspect of my work experience really challenging and and there was a patient encounter that actually really upset me and I know that's something that I'm going to work on and become a bit more resilient to in the future throughout this profession. You don't have to be perfect and I think if you go in being a bit too overconfident and arrogant it probably won't brush off very well on the interviewers so just make sure you're showing that realistic insight into the career. So those are some of the five common reasons that I think people are rejected from medical school pre-interview and post-interview. So interview season is quickly approaching and we are going to be producing so much content to help you excel in your interviews. So do make sure you are subscribed so that you can access all that content as and when it comes out. Best of luck to all you applicants that have already applied and those that are going to be applying in the future. Please let us know if you have any questions in the comments down below. Also let us know in the comments if you managed to secure an interview place at any of the universities you've applied to. That is an incredible achievement. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in another video next week.